one. Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. It's been a couple of weeks since I brought a mod or a video your way. So I'm correcting that right now. Anyway, look behind me. We've got the very dirty 2021 GMC Sierra AT4. And we have another mod we want to do. So the mod that I'm choosing is from boostautoparts.com. Go there, you can see everything they have to offer. For my truck, or a 2019, 2020, 2021 GMC Sierra AT4, Denali, SLT, whatever you might have. They have a number of mods, 13 of them to be exact, um, to do all kinds of things to your truck. I've only done a couple so far. So the first one was a fog light mod, where it allows the fog lights to stay on whenever you use your high beams. You can have all those lights on at the same time, because by default, it normally shuts the fog lights off. So feel free to check out that mod in my video series. If you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe to that and go through the catalog and I'm sure you'll find it. Second and more recently, I installed a faster charger in the console. So you can put your phone there, fast charge it, which is way better than the charger, if you have it, that comes in the vehicle that's just lower down um, before the cup holders. So anyway, two mods have been done with this company. I really like what they have to offer. Here's another $20 mod we're gonna to do today. And what this one's gonna allow us to do is again, mess with the default illumination settings for the vehicle. In this case, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you only get the reverse lights. I also have a light strip that I've installed. So it comes on too with the reverse lights to give me a little extra, but who doesn't want more extra? So we're gonna modify it so the upper cargo light as well as the tailgate cargo light, the bulb closest to me there. They'll both come on when I unlock the vehicle or when I put it in reverse. So that way we're gonna get that full illumination. It's better for safety. It's better for your own visibility. And I'm excited to do that mod. So let's get going. Okay, if you watch that fog light mod, you'll be semi-familiar with these products here. So we've got a couple T-taps because we have to tap into the body control module into the harness. And then we have to route this plug between two different wires in order to make this mod work. So we're gonna go under the dash here. We're gonna access the brown and the pink harnesses for the body control module, pull those out, and then I'll let you know where we have to tap this in. Let's go. Okay, we have the brown and the pink. Let's grab the brown one out first. Push the tab down, pull it out. And then we'll grab the pink one out next. And there we go. So here's our brown harness right here. You can see my wire tap from the previous install for the fog lights. In this case, we need to use pin 26 which is this bottom corner right here. Don't pay attention to the color of the wire because it might be different in your harness. The key is picking the right pin location. So we just need to take a fuse tap like we have with that wire there, give ourselves a little bit of space and tap it in to this wire in pin 26. Okay, we got our T-tap, put the wire in the metal side Fold it over till you get a click. You might need to use some pliers just to give it that little extra. There we go. So that's uh, secured and ready to go. Now let's do the pink one. On this one, we also go to pin 26, but pin 26 happens to be one more wire in. So it's the second last wires. In this case, it's brown. Again, go by pin location, not wire color. So we're going to tap into that guy right there. There. So we're in 26. Fold it over. Might need the pliers. There we go. So we are secured. All right, now time to install the cable. It is directional. The blue end here goes into the brown harness. The one without the blue striping goes in the pink harness. OK, 
Okay, before I hook this up, I'm actually gonna plug the harnesses in. That way I can twist these the way that I need to before I decide where this needs to be bent to connect there. So let me plug these back in and then I'll show you how I connect it. Okay, we've got it connected. You can see there's a, a bit of an aggressive bend there. I don't think that'll be problematic. It's just a heat shrink tubing with some wiring in it and there's not that much wiring. All right, let's see if it works. We should be able to hit unlock and see this come on. I don't know if it's gonna work, haven't tested it yet. Wish me luck, three, two, one. Yes, how about the tailgate? Yes, light bars on, backup lights are on. So let's take it outside, make sure we're in complete darkness and see what it looks like. We got the install done. As you can see, we can now hit unlock or go in reverse and we get the extra lighting, which is fantastic. Who doesn't like some extra light? I feel illuminated. Anyway, I apologize for the dirty vehicle. Winter is upon us, hence the sweater, even though I'm in a heated garage. We just got to keep warm up here in Canada. Anyway, not much to do other than mods. So that's pretty cool. I did want to give an update though on the wireless charging pad. Oops, I locked it. Some people have been asking does your phone slide now that this isn't as deeply recessed as the original cutout? I haven't had a problem. I've got a cheap case on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's just smooth, nothing grippy about it. I've had to slam on the brakes a few times and really no issues. So I guess it could be prone to sliding out of there, but the grippy surface that it comes with Kind of holds on to the phone all right so i have no complaints hasn't been a problem for me but i thought i'd give you that update since multiple people have asked and anyway, if you like today's video hit that like button please consider subscribing and we'll talk to you next time <laughs>